and welcome to Forum 360, a program where we look into interesting topics with a global outlook and a local view here in Northeast Ohio. Uh, I'm your host, Bill Steven Saus, and we have a great topic today, the business of sport in the 21st century. And our guest is Dr. Paul Milton, a PhD from Kent State University, uh, where he was an adjunct professor teaching uh, education and sports management. It's good to have you with us, uh, Paul. Bill, it's great to be with you. Thanks for having me on today. Sports management, that is a topic that uh, is widely understood as being uh, involved with bo mostly uh, to this day professional sports. We recently, we've from a global outlook, we've had Olympic sports uh, and uh, people were focused on Tokyo and the Olympics. Uh, tell us a little bit about the definition of sport, the business of sport, kind of break it down for us. Sure. Well, my definition of sport is uh, rather eclectic and, you know, I don't have, uh, you know, a statement to really talk about it. Uh, I know you spent some time kind of looking through little, the dictionary. And research. There. Right, seeing the definition of sport. But um, my definition deals with uh, the idea that sport is, uh, it's, a, it's a competition and generally speaking, it involves physical activity uh, where it could be individual, an individual or individuals participating in competition uh, against each other. Uh, and my definition, again, is uh, very broad. Um, so it, it goes beyond uh, the professional sport uh, into areas, and I think we're gonna talk about this a little bit today, uh, recreational sport, um, intercollegiate athletics, uh, campus recreation, um, the uh, uh, private industry where they might provide recreational activities like uh, gyms and spas that are privately owned, uh, municipal recreation, um, even some of these what I call fitness palaces that are opening up right. around Northeast Ohio. And so historically, it wasn't in the 21st century, but earlier uh, in our history, uh, Young Men's Christian Association, the YMCA's and Young Men's uh, women's uh, groups started right. uh, here in the Akron uh, Canton area. We have the Shaw Jewish Center, uh, where sports is very recreational. Right. People get involved in uh, intramural sports uh, through various levels. So I appreciate that. Now tell me, uh, Paul Milton, how did you get involved as a young man? You grew up in California. Right. How did, uh, what was your academic? Uh, uh, influence and, and where to, to the point where you are now involved in sports management? Well, I guess I'd say I had the, the typical background for somebody who goes into sport management or even takes a sport management degree. I, I played a lot of sport sports growing up and baseball was my particular favorite sport and um, you know I'm from Southern California and uh, I uh, had the formative years there in um, the LA area and then my family moved to Sacramento so you know I graduated from high school and college in Northern California but I started playing baseball at a young age um, my father took me to games back in those days um, in Southern California in the in the mid and late 50s so that dates me <laughs> um, they played in the Coliseum you know they had renovated the Coliseum right. so I got to go see Dodger games in the Coliseum right. uh, one of their players was Wally Moon and he used to hit what they call moon shots right. over the, he was a left-handed batter, you hit him over the wall in left field actually, so uh, he didn't try and pull it like today's stars do. <laughs> but, um, you know, growing up there, we moved to Northern California, I continued to play sport, uh, sports, baseball, um, and uh, I went to UC Davis, and I think that, when I went to Davis, that's where uh, my career, um, really started to get formulated. So University of California at Davis, right. which is outside Sacramento, the state capital, uh, probably a very influential school. Uh, you, you took history, you took liberal arts, and how did you find your way into sports management ultimately? Well, that's true. I, I took a history degree there. Uh, my specialty is U.S. history. And I, my college roommate, and we were, this is when I was a sophomore, and my college roommates, you, you know, he was a really active guy and uh, very emotive and 
Uh, he said, uh, one fall, he said, let's go officiate flag football. It'll be really great. You know, we can be out there. When they score a touchdown, we can throw our arms up in the air. Get involved with the local kids out there. Right, exactly, uh, on the college campus. So we, we offici went and officiated intramural football, and then we did some basketball and softball in the, in the spring. And uh, later on, I became coordinator of officials uh, for the department, and uh, I had a couple mentors there. One in particular who had just finished her degree at uh, Michigan State, she did hers in exercise science, but she knew about a degree there called intramural administration. Okay. And it really was the precursor to uh, you know, the modern day sport management degree. Mm -hmm. uh, although sport management as a degree actually got started in the mid 60s down really? at Ohio University, right Ohio here in Ohio. Or in Columbus. Right. Uh, no, the, oh, uh, it, oh, it, in LU. Athens, the right, Athens, yeah, uh, right. Athens campus, yep. right, the original. So yeah, it got started there. That's that's another story altogether, but uh, how it got started. Uh, it's part of teaching the history of sport management. So, um, <clears throat> so I went to Michigan State. I took the master's degree in intramural administration, and it was my heart's desire to be a campus recreation uh, manager or administrator. But, um, you know, as things go, my first job was in a recreation department at a, a small town in Michigan called Marshall, Michigan. Okay. And uh, if, if there's any of your viewers out there that know anything about Michigan, or if you've traveled to Michigan, you probably are familiar with Wynn Schuler's, mm -hmm. the restaurants there. The original one is in Marshall, Michigan. Okay, small town. Small town. So you know, I had one year there, and I got five years worth of experience in, wow. in my field. So you know, it was, it was different. But had an opportunity to uh, take my first job in campus rec at a moderately sized public institution in upstate New York called the State University College at Oneonta. So yeah, State University of New York. Right, okay. right, exactly. So yeah. got my start there. I became director, uh, you know, after a few years. And then I went to Kent State. So, you know. Right here in Northeast Ohio. Here in Northeast Ohio. I took the job there. I was an assistant director for about 12 years. I became director and had a, fa a you know, really wonderful career in campus rec. Uh, and then following that, um, I did get the PhD from Kent State University in higher ed administration of all things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, after my career at, at Kent, I worked there 26 years in the administration running the campus rec program. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I'd really like to try something different. And I had done some teaching in the Kent State program and I thought, well, I'll just try and, you know, get on as a, as a faculty member at a college. And I had several interviews, but I interviewed at Ashland University. Still here in Northeast Ohio. Right, right. yep. And uh, the individual who was dean of the college that, at that time had been dean of the School of Exercise, Leisure, and Sport at Kent State. Okay. So we knew each other, and I think that helped me uh, get one of the two faculty openings they had there. So, so at Ashland, uh, which is now Ashland University, right? and then uh, you returned to Kent State, and you went to Cleveland State University. Right. right. And that was one of your last uh, posts right. in this field. Uh, sports management, you helped with the undergraduate program at Cleveland State University, correct? Right, I was the undergraduate coordinator mm -hmm. of the sport management degree program at Cleveland State. Very good, so that is bringing a, a global topic, <laughs> global outlook to a local Northeast Ohio view. Uh, Paul Milton, our guest, uh, he's Dr. Paul Milton, a PhD from Kent State University, and we are talking about 21st century business of sport and sports management. And I'd like to have you elaborate on recreational sports. You said Northeast Ohio is unique. We have some of the biggest professional sports. We've got some of the biggest NCAA college and university sports. And, and then we bring it down to the recreational uh, community sports. Uh, we bring it down to high school and even perhaps just the elementary school uh, basic getting involved in sports. Pee wee, football, Little League. Uh, talk a little bit about that aspect. When you went to Cleveland State, what was the typical, <coughs> when you were at Cleveland State, what was the typical question an undergraduate might come to you and say, I'd like to take this course, why? Well, uh, even at the other two institutions uh, at which I was a faculty member, um, mm -hmm. students would come in thinking to themselves, 
sort of like I did. You know, I played sport, I, I love sport, and I'm interested in working in sport. Mm -hmm. And of course, this happened at Cleveland and, and at Kent and, and at Ashland, all, all four places, where the students would say, I want to, you know, I, I love the idea of taking a degree in sport management. Mm -hmm. But when I would ask them questions about, you know, well, why do you want to do this? Uh, oftentimes, uh, even up to my last year at Cleveland State, although it was changing some, the student would say, well, they had seen Jerry Maguire or something like that. Right, I money want, ball. Right, yeah, I want, to, I want to be a, a professional um, uh, sports management person. Right, you know, I want to, I want to be an agent. Agent, so, business um, agent for a sports person. Right, exactly. Or. I want to work for my favorite professional sport team. A lot of that is still going on when right. students come in. I, I want to work for the Cavs. I, I want, want to work, work for, for the Browns. Uh, Browns or right. the future Guardians now. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but, you know, so I think one of the strong points or one of my entries into the field of sport management, I think that was, uh, you know, that I enjoyed was to sort of expand their thinking when they came in, because those, those certainly are legitimate career opportunities at sport, but you think about the number of professional sport teams, say, just in the four you know, general leagues that we look at, and I guess there are five, I would include soccer in that nowadays, mm -hmm. but um, you, know, you look at hockey, you look at the NBA, you look at the NHL, you look at MLB, and you know, how many teams are there when you, when you get down to it? Um, you know, maybe as many as 150, but you know, that's not that many sport opportunities right. uh, to be employed in, in the business. So uh, if you looked on, however, if you looked on the, even the, uh, the Cavs website and looked at the other jobs besides player, uh, on-field manager, on-field coach, you know, there's, sometimes 600 jobs or more in, uh, in, on the team that don't deal with the, directly with the on-field uh, uh, participation. Right. You know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the w you know, why people come and watch. Uh, so there are a lot of, lot of job opportunities, but you know, when you think about that, um, there's not that many opportunities in professional, so, in, in those leagues. So business, you're looking and you brought in the business perspective for a sports management person. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. I'm going to say that we are talking to Dr. Paul Milton, a PhD uh, with his degree in education and sports management. And he received his PhD from Kent State University, his master's degree in this field at Michigan State University, East Lansing, Michigan. And he honed that basic uh, degree in Ashland University, uh, back at Kent State University and uh, at Cleveland State University. And we're talking about sports management. You were the coordinator of sports management, the last uh, position at Cleveland State University, and you were trying to engage undergraduate students. You saw that at Ashland University, you saw the, the, the desire to get involved in this program because people, like, as you said, people were uh, becoming very active in finding business and sports, getting jobs, right. and that's so important for the economy. Uh, so traditional sports we see on television. Right. Uh, the global outlook being recently the Olympics, or you see European football, soccer, uh, you see uh, swimming competition, golf around the world. Uh, many of these sports are universal around the world. But then bringing it down to the local level, uh, what are some of the students doing that, well, without naming names, you could talk, some, some of the active students that you really got involved with, but what are some of the types of things they've, they're doing now? Whether it's here in Ohio or outside of Ohio, but give me a, some examples, uh, Paul. Sure, yeah, and as I mentioned earlier, I think one of the things that I brought to the table was uh, a more global perspective right. in terms of right. job opportunities especially. Uh, so my background, as I've mentioned, was uh, as in what we call campus recreation. So okay. you look at a college campus, and you know I can think of very few that don't have a campus rec program. Um, and you know nowadays these uh, shrines to uh, recreational sport are being built on college campuses. And uh, you know, Kent State certainly has one. When I was director there, um, the the building went up, and now that's 22 years ago. So, right. 
But, you know, like I tell students, you know, they, uh, you know, I ask them, where are you from? Well, some say I'm from Columbus, or I'm from Toledo, or I'm from Youngstown. And, you know, I'm inter interested in a degree. And I said, okay, well, Youngstown, let's talk about that a little bit. Did you, d was there a municipal recreation program in your city? And as they mm -hmm. thought about it, they'd say, yeah, of course there was. Yeah, Columbus, yes, Cleveland, right. you know, municipal recreation. Was there any of that? And of course, they were, they, people would say yes. And then I would ask them, well, do you think those places run themselves? Exactly. And you know, so the, the answer is obvious. They don't. You, they bring in recreation uh, professionals, sport management professionals, professionals to come in and run these programs. Very good. So, and even inside those programs would be uh, specialized jobs that people would do in, in the program. So there'd be a director of uh, the Cleveland Parks and Recreation, for example. Right. But Cleveland has several uh, metro parks and they own several golf courses. Right, exactly. So they need people to manage golf courses. They need people to manage the, uh, the metro parks. They need people to manage recreational activities. And there, I know that there are rec centers in, in Cleveland and Akron. Right. And they need people to manage those things. And then you have athletic directors at all high schools, usually secondary schools. Exactly. National uh, NCAA uh, colleges. Uh, athletic departments are very diverse, right? And so you see some of your students, you know, moving on into academia too, correct? Yes, we do. Becoming coaches yes, and we staff. Do. Yes, and uh, you, you hit on something that is really um, up and coming in sport, the sport management field, and this is uh, athletic director at high schools and even junior highs. Right. Okay. So, you know, the, these, uh, these, especially the public schools, are, are identifying a need, a current need for someone to come in who can <laughs> manage an right. athletics program. Right. Just as we have athletic directors at colleges and universities, that is, that is uh, needed much more at the high school and even junior high level. Right. At the NCAA level, uh, college athletics, university athletics, we see the athletic directors uh, moving uh, students <coughs> into really a business position. Right. We see some of the athletes that are uh, getting involved in advertising for products. Right. Uh, you see some of the major uh, vendors of uh, sports clothing, uh, that's a business into it, uh, uh, you know, promoting sports clothing, uh, sports equipment. Then you've got the medical field, the physical therapist, the sports medicine uh, in the medical field. Then in the legal field for pre-law students, uh, contracts right. uh, providing uh, sports management definitely needs uh, lawyers to understand contracts, people to understand budget. Right. So the, the the miners, even the accountant miners, the, the pre-law miners, you're going to find the idea of taking sports management courses being very beneficial. Absolutely. And um, as we talked about, I, uh, I would often advise students, if they are interested in a sport management degree, I would say, okay, so do a sport management degree, but take a minor in business. Okay, very good. And sometimes I would even say, you know, if you wanted to be a sport agent, for example, you know, take a business degree uh, and then go to law school. Like Mark McCormick, the late Mar Mark McCormick, uh, who uh, was an Ivy League, you know, trained as a lawyer, but came to Cleveland right. and started the International Management right. Group. IMG, right. IMG, Arnold Palmer, and many of the great pros, right. pro athletes uh, in various sports uh, benefited from having a lawyer in, in charge. Right. And uh, making sure that the contracts are uh, well formed. And the object, of course, is to uh, make sports as an industry right. uh, be a, a valid industry, which I think it is right. today. Uh, it's competing with all the major uh, industries of the greater Cleveland and Akron, Canton, Youngstown area. Uh, very, a lot of money going into it, a right. lot of jobs. Uh, again, how are some of your students satisfied with uh, when they come back and say, uh, we learned a lot from sports management courses. You see a lot of uh, <coughs> referrals back to you. Bill, I think I'll answer that question by saying that uh, I've had students who uh, actually went from sport, they maybe would work a few years in sport, they would go into pure business. In fact, uh, one student of mine 
uh, in the early days at Ashland. Um, she is now, I believe she's a vice president for um, the uh, uniform. They, they do uniforms. You know, I can't remember their name. I say, but one of the yeah. bigger right. uh, that does, does sports yeah. uniforms. And right. If there is a uh, undergraduate that maybe you thought uh, followed a path that uh, uh, that you would have wanted them to, um, do you have some of the ideas what some of the ideal paths that they followed, other than this lady uh, that you talked about? What are a couple others? Well, uh, certainly we have, uh, I've, I have had students at all three institutions who have gone into careers in prof professional sport. Mm -hmm. So we have people working for the Cavaliers right now. We have wor people working for um, the Indians slash Guardians. Right. Um, we have them working for the Browns um, in professional so sport. So Northeast Ohio does provide plenty of, oh, it does. Plenty of places. Right. You don't have to travel too far. Right. You can get your degree here and then work in this community. That's right, you can. And, uh, and, and so to expand on that, it's not just in professional sport, right. but there are people working. Some people have gone back to their communities that they were raised in, and they're working, say, in the municipal rec department there. Very good. Uh, you actually did some work a, in research, and you got involved in a, a journal that was called uh, the National Intramural and Recreational Sports Association Journals, right. and very active. And that really, that organization uh, points to these local and regional uh, recreational facilities. Right, exactly. Points out yeah. uh, the need for these facilities. Right. Uh, we see rec centers in a lot of the major cities here in Northeast Ohio, as you pointed out. And then universities. Uh, you've seen universities actually say the, these programs uh, bring new students in, and uh, as you said, I want to be a sports manager. And they come in and they see there's so many other uh, things involved in this. Right, yes. Not just an agent. Right, not uh, just an agent and not just a faculty member. Or and certainly not just working in professional sport. But the industry is so, uh, so interesting. And one thing, you s talked about building character. Uh, young people, uh, sometimes they're, they're disadvantaged youth, uh, and they want to improve their character. They want to uh, get under some good coaching and some good sports management. Would you say this is the type of uh, course you'd want to take if you were at a university? Uh, if certainly. A, if you certainly. were a young person like that. Yeah, we, uh, uh, most sport management degree programs uh, will offer a course in, say, sports sociology. Right. So this is the type of place that, uh, the, the type of class that, you know, you're going to learn about, um, you know, the, the sociological portion of sport, you know. And that would include things like um, critical theory, critical race theory, cr critical gender theory. Right. Um, not really, uh, you'd learn more about those things, right. not that they would be you know, something to be implemented. Um, but you'd see how they apply to sport. Right, to exactly. Sports. Yeah, exactly. And uh, how uh, in a community uh, such as Northeast Ohio, uh, you've had some of the early sports uh, pioneers, Canton Bulldogs in NFL. Right. Uh, right. Uh, the, right now we have the National Football League Sports Hall of Fame you know, Professional Sports Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, in our region here in the Western Reserve community. Um, I think Ohio does offer quite a bit of uh, activity for, for young sports uh, involvement. It, it does indeed, yes. Both campus recreation uh, and community recreation, as well as the semi-pros and professional, work, professional sport, sports right. working your way up. Intercollegiate uh, athletics. Intercollegiate athletics. Right. Um, we have seen uh, more recreational centers being built in Northeast Ohio, uh, a lot of money being spent in that area. So the politicians, the, um, the administrations of these cities and counties are moving more money toward this to help people, help young people. All right. And uh, do you find, uh, we got about a minute or two left here, Forum 360, uh, Paul Milton, do you find that, uh, that there's any thing that you want to bring out that uh, you think future for the 21st century, future uh, teachers, coaches should know about getting their young people in sports management? Well, um, and we have good pipelines. Uh, well, you know, I shouldn't say we because I'm not at Cleveland State. I, I'm retired now. So. Retired, but yeah. looking back in your career. Right. And I, I, uh, 
you know, we had a good pipeline um, at Cleveland State to, you know, students coming in. And a former uh, CSU student actually created a sport management institute. So we're kind of filtering students into that. Right now it's about 25 per year into that program from the Cleveland area who, you know, we always hope that they'll take a degree at Cleveland State, State, but, you know. Or alumni. Uh, you see the alumni at Kent State University, many of them go on to majors, major college and international, right. yeah. as well as uh, professional sports, and they come back and they help their younger students. Exactly. Uh, I've, had, I've had professionals in event management come back, uh, in uh, intercollegiate athletics come back and you know they've been guest speakers uh, for a day and Excellent. so and we have a strong alumni group at Cleveland State and they they are very very willing to come back and and help us out there so well I appreciate your being with us uh, Paul Milton Dr. Paul Milton PhD uh, in education and sports management we learned a lot the business of sport and how Northeast Ohio has really created a, a good avenue, a good uh, location for people. They always said Cleveland and the Northeast Ohio are the greatest location in the nation. I think in sports, uh, you can all, all agree. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Hey, have a good week. Forum 360 is brought to you by John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, the Akron Community Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron, Blue Green, Electric Impulse Communications, and Forum 360 supporters.